Hey class of Professor Nick Sinski at UNC Charlotte, and this is part five of our Rhino tutorial videos. Uh, for this last part, we're going to talk about how to export uh, your three-dimensional models from Rhino into 2D line drawings that you're going to be editing um, in Adobe Illustrator. And uh, specifically in this case, you're going to be constructing uh, an axonometric drawing um, of your model. But before we do that, I want to briefly talk about the uh, idea or the the sort of concept of how you get uh, your drawings out of um, out of Rhino. So uh, to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and go to a, like an orthographic uh, view, like a front view, and um, I've got this. Uh, We've got this front facade here. I'm going to use a command called make 2D. It's uh, an AKE 2D. You have to choose the objects. Uh, if all you're doing is is uh, you can basically do a window. If you want to grab everything, you can you can do like select all. We can actually select all before we do the command, and it'll automatically launch it. We're going to be really careful here. We can say uh, which drawing we want to use. I want to use the current view. So it's showing up on the screen. There's an option here to show hidden lines uh, that may be useful. Maintaining source layers, uh, if you've organized your file in a certain way, uh, that could be useful. Um, note that when you show hidden lines, you get extra layers um, for hidden lines. Uh, and uh, we go ahead, and once you're done with that, you can go ahead and say, uh, okay, and that's going to process it. What happens is, is that it actually exports it to the uh, top view, produces a drawing. And you can see it's kind of yellow here. Uh, what we want to do is very carefully, uh, actually an easy way to do this is to just to say select um, objects, invert, and then hide everything that wasn't uh, produced by Make2D. And so you can see that these are actually our Make2D uh, lines. You know that not everything comes in exactly the way it was um, when the Make2D command was, was run. There may be some lines missing, uh, there may be extra lines. It's just kind of how the command works. Um, Make2D is not intended for the purpose that we're using it for. It's not meant to be to make 2D line drawings. Uh, what it's meant to do is for you to be able to take uh, a three-dimensional object uh, that you that you might that you might that you might draw and basically flatten it to something that's like 2D. Okay, so if I take this line and uh, I'm just going to move it so it becomes a three-dimensional line, okay? You can see this line's got, this line's in 3D. If I wanted to, to flatten that so I could make it a, uh, a like trim line or, or something like that, um, that is literally what the Make2D command would do. So if I look at this thing in perspective, you can see it's, it's three-dimensional. But if I go in and I say, okay, make 2D, um, I go into the top view, it just produces this as a two-dimensional line. Um, and that can be useful for different kinds of modeling tasks. Uh, but that's basically what it's for. It's actually, it's meant, it's meant to flatten 3D geometry into 2D uh, for modeling, uh, not for representation. So um, even though it's very useful for this task that we have, you know, for making these 2D line drawings, um, that's not what it's intended for. It's kind of a hack. And so you just have to bear that in mind when you're using it because uh, it may not work the way you expect it to. You may have to clean up after it um, a little bit, but it's certainly uh, easier than the alternative than, 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 than any other alternative we've found. It's worked very well for us for years. Um, and uh, I, think you'll, I think you'll be pretty pleased with the results. So anyway, just bear that in mind. Um, once you've got your lines, you can go ahead and say uh, export selected. We're going to save it as a DWG. Save it as a really old DWG, uh, uh, like an R12. That's only because there's all these weird settings in all the new uh, in, in all the new formats of DWG, and, and uh, they can cause problems when they get opened up in different versions of Adobe Illustrator. The simplest way to do it is just is just to keep the uh, the thing really old here. And I might just check always use these settings. Um, Go ahead and click OK, and uh, the files are written. If I go into Illustrator, I can go ahead and open up that file. And in this case, I'm just going to say scale the artboard. We can always rescale it. 
um, later. You can see our, all of our lines are, are have popped in. Um, let's take a look at this here. If I look at it in the layers, it's it's got a BQD layer. All the lines are on that are on that layer. Um, here, there we go. It's got to be really careful when you scale it that you scale everything. And, and then we can we can go in and um, we can we can either use it as an as an underlay to draw you know new lines on top of it, or we can use the lines themselves. Um, with our line type and line weight, which let's go ahead and make them all. Just gonna sort them out here, you know. And this is not exactly the way you'd the way you do it, but. See, since it actually, it actually separated um, all of those. Sometimes they don't show up until you zoom in a little bit. But anyway, basically apply the uh, logic that you've you've been applying to sort out the lines in our drawings uh, so that you can represent um, depth. Okay, and uh, you know once you've once you've got that, you can kind of manage your drawing um, as normal when you actually label it and plot it. You know, other things you can do, well, well, we'll talk about that in a second, but anyway, that's the basic principle of how to get these things out. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about how to get an axonometric drawing. If I go back, show my object here. Shaded view. What I've got for you guys is a, a script. If you go to Moodle, there's this Rhino Axon script. If you, um, Unzip that, you'll see that there's actually a little text file. A second here. Yeah, a little text file here. And there's a PDF with instructions for how to use it. Okay. Um, so it's important to be in the four views uh, mode. Make sure your view is focused in the top viewport. Rotate your model to present the sides of your building that you want in the axon. So the side of your model that points down will be the right facing side of the axon. Okay. Rotate your model before you run the script. Okay. Then we open the script, copy paste it into the command bar of Rhino, and uh, that'll do the trick. So let's follow our instructions here. So let's go to four view. You have to be in top view when you run the script. Go ahead and select everything that's Control A or Command A, and then uh, copy paste so Control C or Command C. Uh, and then paste it into Rhino. It'll, it says select objects. Okay, selected. And there you go. It just automatically kind of runs. You can see that, that in our in our top view now uh, we have an axonometric. And as I said, it, it, it takes the um, the the top view, like whatever's in the front that faces the bottom, will be on the right side of the axonometric. Okay. So if I if I need to undo all this. So if I if I wanted it to be a forward facing one, I would actually need to rotate my model this way. Let's go ahead and run that script again. So I've got it and still in the top viewport. Uh, let's go ahead and control paste or uh, copy paste. Select the objects. Press enter, and you can see the transform uh, has been made. Okay, so that's going to get me uh, that view. Now, what happened? I'll check this out. What we've actually done is, this, again, kind of a hack here. There isn't an axonometric uh, view uh, in Rhino. Uh, it's not possible. So what we've actually done is taken the building, skewed it uh, 45 degrees, uh, and then it basically it basically flattened it here. Uh, and so when you once you do that. Then you've actually got your like what's what's ready to be uh, turned into your axonometric drawing. So let's go ahead and do the same procedure we did before. We will uh, select everything, make 2D. I'm already in the top view, so this is fine. Uh, current view. I'm going to show hidden lines. 
uh, and it's going to go ahead and keep these uh, on layers. So I've got hidden lines, visible lines. Um, yep. You can say show tangent lines. I'm not sure if you need that though. Um, and that's it. So let me we go ahead, go ahead and press OK. And there are lines. Remember, select invert. Look at that. See the white lines are the hidden lines, and the black lines are the uh, are the are the visible lines. So that's kind of nice. Go ahead and select everything. You can also do Control C. Uh, I mean, sorry, Control A. Uh, export. I'm just going to go ahead and put this into that drawing again. Yes. Open it up in Illustrator. It's probably not going to like me. There we go. Just go ahead and close these. Okay. Open this up again. Scale that artboard. That's fine. So you know, once again, let's just go ahead and rescale this a little bit. Um, just make sure that you scale them all the same amount. Let's actually go ahead and and uh, look at that. Transform scale. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to scale it 75%. We can always rescale it later to be the to be the true scale um, because the measurements are because the measurements come from um, you know, like uh, we can always scale it to the right size because we can measure lines in Adobe Illustrator, so we can always get the scale right with a little bit of math. Um, notice again, so the two layers here, so we've got the solid lines and the hidden lines. Okay. And you can, by pressing on the button, you can select all those lines. Let's actually go ahead and make them all kind of a base weight for the time being. Let's make them all the 0.5. Important to have round caps uh, selected. Uh, that way, the, the line edges will actually join really nice, especially when you scale them up. Um, so let's go ahead and select these. You can play with a, with a dashed line, so we can kind of see what actually doesn't look tight enough. Depends on the scale you're going to be plotting it. That might be okay. So you can see you can you can create an obvious difference between what's hidden and what's and what's uh, and what's visible. Okay. Uh, then I can always you can always turn off those other layers. So we can begin to kind of play with our form. Maybe the edge of an axonometric, the kind of silhouette, is often. Uh, set off from the page. Notice here that this isn't two lines, this is one line. So if you, if you wanted to do something a little bit different than that, we might have to actually draw a new line there. So we go ahead and beat these up. Now, important to note, too, that you can select things that have the same appearance. So if I wanted to go back and change, if I have my hierarchy established, but the weights aren't enough, like, in fact, I don't have this one. Wait enough. You can always go back, pick one that's um, of the uh, of the type you want to change, just go to same appearance, and that'll, um, oops, not that, same weight, I think, works. Yeah, stroke weight. That'll join us together. You can also group them together when you're ready. And uh, then it's very easy for me to do something like, okay, I'm going to make these all, you know, two point, or I'm going to make these all uh, one point five point. So that can be really useful to make those modifications. You can go ahead and use the pen tool or something. If you want to go ahead and add something to that to kind of fix that, fix that silhouette in there. And again, your your. Uh, Object is certainly going to be different. Your impression of how to describe it is going to be it's going to be different. Let's go ahead and select all the same weight again. Let's see here. the wrong. These are these need to be 1.5. That's why. There we go. Okay, now now these are grouped together as one as one piece. You know, maybe these are one. 
So just trying to understand the different uh, different forms of the object. Of course, consistency is going to be uh, like really important. If you go ahead. I'm not going to spend a lot of time doodling with this. This is the kind of thing that you'd have to, have to work on yourself. But so again, establishing the visual hierarchy. So pretty good, you know, better than what it came in as. And then if you look at the, uh, the hidden lines, uh, you can kind of get an understand. And uh, you know, you you can decide uh, how how you want to render these. You know, if you want to adjust the weights, uh, it probably doesn't make a lot of difference, but it's something you might something you might look into. That's pretty good. You're not quite like what's happening in there, um, but. That's probably just the drawing. So anyway, um, a hidden line, a hidden line drawing of that um, is going to is going to show you a bit more information. You probably will need uh, more than one view to really be able to understand the object. You might want to do it from from two different sides. Um, certainly, your exploded view uh, is going to help, and and you could you can make you know an exploded view. So something else you can do uh, in order in order to help you understand your building is to um, explode it. And uh, the way you do that is simply just to take take the model as you as you have it, and uh, you can you know move the pieces uh, vertically uh, or horizontally depending upon you know how you want to explode it. But you know you basically basically move those pieces um, out of the way, uh, and then you can go ahead and proceed uh, the way that we have with this um, axon script. Okay, so just take these, take that, and uh, go to four view, go to my top view, select everything, copy paste, and there we go. So I've got, I've got an exploded uh, drawing. And you may have to experiment with moving, you know, this thing a little bit higher up or a little bit lower uh, so that you actually get, get that done right. Um, let's take a look. So I'll probably move this up a little bit more. You can always move it down in um, Illustrator. So it's okay to exaggerate. Let's, let's try that again there. Ah, it's better. Okay, so I got my two pieces. Go to top view, select all, make 2D. Current view, show hidden lines. That's all good. Okay. And in my top view, uh, select invert, hide. I like I don't have to do this because the lines actually are selected automatically um, when I make the um, when I do the make 2D. Um, but I do that just to get the other objects uh, out of the way in case I want to move these around or or something or in case I lose my selection. Okay, so that's really helpful. Another thing that I uh, that I I think I forgot to mention is that it's really important to save your file before you do the Make 2D, uh, because as you know, or as you should know, it uh, destroys your, your model. I mean, you might have to undo it, or uh, or actually skew it a uh, positive, uh, actually, I think a negative 45 degrees will actually de-skew it. Anyway, it's, it's a real pain, though. It actually uh, distorts your model. Uh, so you need to save a copy of your file before you start uh, applying uh, the axonometric script to do your Make 2Ds, or if you, because if you don't save your file, uh, uh, it's going to be, it's going to be messed up. Okay. So make sure to do that. Uh, just, just bear that in mind and uh, make sure to save a copy of that before you start this. Okay. Once you've got these lines again, we go ahead and export those and uh, make our uh, exploded drawing, uh, which may be easier to understand. Okay. So um, you can apply this logic to making your um, positive axonometrics and your uh, mold or negative axonometrics uh, using the methods I showed you earlier to maybe like split the mold into different pieces or uh, or again um, just moving those parts out of the way uh, to create an exploded axonometric. Um, so go ahead and give that a shot uh, over this week here and uh, we'll, we will take a look at your stuff uh, in class. If you have any questions let us know. Thanks.